Hey, what's up guys? My name is Alex Chung. Today, we're talking about how to edit moody pictures in Lightroom. Now, I'm sure that most of you guys have seen those really cool looking Instagram pictures that look like this, this, and this. And I'm sure you've thought to yourself, man, I wish I knew how they edited that photo. Well, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how. So let's jump right into the computer. All right, now that we're in Lightroom, let's take a look at how we begin editing a moody picture. And first, let's define what makes a picture quote unquote moody. From the examples on their website, Moodygrams, that's their official Instagram page, you can go follow them there. You can see that in their posts, a lot of these pictures have really deep blacks and deep shadows. And they offset that by having really bright highlights right here to emphasize certain parts of the image. And this contrast of light and dark creates a really pleasing look. So now let's go back into Lightroom and let's see how we can achieve the same thing. On the left here is a picture that I grabbed off their website and it's a picture of New York City and that's going to be our reference picture right here. And on the right is a picture that I took when I went to Seattle and this is of the Pike Market Place. So first I'm going to go to over here to the highlights and I'm gonna drop it down to negative 70. And for the shadows, I'm gonna bump it up to about 85 right here. And I'm doing this just to flatten out the image so we have a nicer base image to work off of. And to offset that, to compensate for that, I'm going to raise the whites to about 40 right here. And then for the blacks, I'm going to drop it down to about 40 as negative 40 as well, just to give back some of the contrast that I took out of it. And then for the vibrance, I'm going to set it to around plus 19, plus 20 around there, just to give it a little bit more color back to some of the parts of the image. Next down here in the tone curve, I'm going to set a point in the middle so I don't mess around too much with the midtone since I like where they are right now. And I'm just gonna apply a simple and standard S curve to the image by dropping down the shadows and raising the highlights a little bit. And then for the endpoints on the tone curve, I'm going to just pinch it in ever so slightly right here just to give the shadows and uh, the highlights sort of a faded look since in this picture right here, there's a fade in the shadows going on right here. So I wanna create that same effect and right there looks good. All right, moving on to the saturation panel, I'm going to drop the green to negative 100, the aquas to 100, and the purple and magenta, all of them to negative 100. And I'm also gonna bump up the orange to around plus 64, looks good, just to give the street lights and some of the buildings a little bit more color. Now, it looks a little too green, in my opinion. So I'm gonna go over to the hue panel right here. I'm gonna drop it down to negative 50 to give it a more reddish tone. And I'm also going to drop the yellow slider down to about negative 37, looks good right there. And for the blue, I'm going to make it a little bit more green. So I'm gonna drag it down to negative 19, negative 20 around there, looks good to me. Going down here to the split toning, I'm going to choose one of the preset colors that Lightroom provides for us. I'm gonna choose that last one right here on the right. And it's automatically gonna pick a color for me and set the saturation to 12%. That's fine right there, it looks good for me. And then in the shadows, I'm gonna do the same thing with the preset color, the last one right here. And I'm gonna actually bump the saturation up to 30%. And now you can see how uh, the shadows right here give a little bit more of a bluish tint as well and you can see it definitely in the sky as well in the clouds that um, in the picture right here they have this sort of bluish tint to the darker uh, sky. Now in order to really sell this moody tone what you want to do is in my picture right here I have a really bright sky and in this sky right here it's really dark. So we wanna sell it by dropping the exposure drastically. So in order to do that, we're gonna use what's called a graduated filter right here, the box icon right here underneath the histogram. Give that a click, and then you're able to draw a new filter right here. 
So I'm gonna click and drag anywhere on the screen. I'm just gonna drag it from the top all the way down to about halfway into your image. So now the filter gives you a whole set of new options to change what, how the inside of the box looks like. So I'm gonna go over here to the exposure and just drop it down to negative 1.67. Right around there, just instantly creates this more of a moody look to the image. So what you can do is you can actually drag and reposition this filter right here by going over the little dot right here and clicking and dragging along the image to adjust how dark and where you want the filter to affect. So I'm gonna drag it to around right here and that looks good for me. You can already see that the sky is being affected heavily uh, it's kind of matching what is going on here in the reference picture. I'm gonna turn it off and on. So this is before the filter and this is after the filter. And you can see right away that it gives that instant moody look to it. Another filter that you might want to add is something called the radio filter and you can use it to increase the brightness of a certain part of the picture. So right here is radio filter. And for me, in my image, the part that I want to emphasize is the public market center sign. So I want to make the audience look at that part of the image uh, instantly. So what you can do is draw a circle and you can just draw it anywhere around the image and then you can use the dot right in the center to reposition where you want this filter to go. So first things first, I'm gonna choose invert and feather out my filter all the way to 100% so that the filter is not as harsh. Next, we're gonna set the exposure to about 0.5 and I'm gonna drop the highlights down to negative 100 and bump up the shadows to 100. And now, as you can tell already, you can see how much this uh, public market center sign is being affected, how much more you can see it clearly. I'm gonna turn it off. This is before, and this is after with the filter on. So right away, you can just see how much this filter can help your image. And after you're done with that, just give the radio filter a click, and that will close out that panel. And last but not least, what you wanna do is go down to your lens correction panel right here, and you wanna add sort of a vignette to the image. So I'm gonna set my vignetting to around negative 80, 80 right there should be good for me. And what that does is it just darkens the corner as you can see and that just brings the audience's attention again to the center of my image and that's where I want them to focus on. In this picture right here in the reference picture of New York City, they've darkened the corners around and you naturally just focus on the city itself. For your picture, um, if it's too strong for your taste, you can always lower the vignetting down to your preference. All right, so I'm gonna leave mine at negative 80 and that's pretty much it. So now what you can do is you go over to your presets panel and create a new preset by clicking on the plus sign right here and give your preset a name, Moody Tones and make sure that your settings in the settings right here, your white balance is unchecked and also the exposure is unchecked. We do this because every picture that you take, every picture that you edit is gonna have their own white balance and exposure setting to it. So after you've done that, you hit create and that's gonna create a new preset for you and then you can now use this on every picture that you want to apply to it. So I, here's a new picture that I took and I'm just gonna put the preset that we just made, Moody Tones right here, and it's gonna just apply what we did in the previous image onto this new image right here. And that's it. Like always, I hope you guys learned something awesome from this tutorial. I've included a download link to the preset that I just made in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. And also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell notification to get future updates. My name is Alex Chung, and I'll see you later.